Yo! Video games. What up, dudes? It's Matt here from Yo! Video Games, back with another game review. Now, I know I haven't done a lot of these, and frankly, I don't feel I should be obligated necessarily, unless I really feel it strikes me that I want to do one. So, uh, jumping into it, yeah, I wanted to do a review for Sonic Mania, because it's a game that's been pretty uh, important to me coming out this year. So, a little backstory on Sonic Mania, it's a game published by Sega, but developed by mostly fans who originally were making fan games uh, in the past, uh, most notably Christian Whitehead goes by Taxman, who recently was picked up by Sega to do iOS ports of Sonic 1 and 2, and I think Sonic CD. And uh, the main developers on this game are Christian Whitehead, uh, Pagoda West, er, uh, and Headcanon Games. And they are a pretty small team, but they did a fantastic job. But I don't want to get too bogged down in the in the making over the behind the scenes. But just know that it was a small team of devoted fans who had experience working on Sonic games in a fandom or a fan game capacity. Who later got picked up by Sega. Uh, other notable people are T. Lopez, the main composer for the game, and Hyper Potions, who did some of the trailer music and the intro music, and Tyson Hess and. Um, you know, people who collaborated with Tyson on the animated intro and outro. So, it is all people who were at one time just fans of Sonic now making a Sonic product. And the result is the best Sonic game easily since the early 90s and possibly even ever, depending on, you know, who you ask. Uh, Sonic Mania obviously is a big old return to form. What I like about this game in particular is that it goes back to the style, but it's not exactly a one-to-one. -one. It's not 4x3, it's 16x9, it's widescreen, it's HD. Uh, it's not just, hey, a, a remake or, or a demake even of, of Sonic games and making a 16-bit version. The idea behind it is to make a 2D Sonic game for the Sega Saturn. The idea being, what if, instead of failing to come up with Sonic Extreme for the Sega Saturn during the Sega Saturn years, they said, hey, Saturn is a 2D monster, what would a Sonic game look and play like on the Sega Saturn? So that's the idea that they had going forward with Sonic Mania, and it works flawlessly because it's much more fluidly animated, there's a lot more in-betweens, there's scaling and rotation effects, all kinds of goodies like that. The special stage even has a low-poly 3D mode, although the fact of the matter is, is that since the games, even the 3D mode runs at 60 frames, that almost puts it out of Saturn's capabilities, but not quite, because if you remember, Sega Rally Championship on the Sega Saturn ran at 60 frames per second, and that was a fully 3D title, so there was abilities to make the Sega Saturn run technical wizardry 60 frames per second in full 3D on the Sega Saturn, but let's not get too far down that path, let's just talk about what we got here. So, uh, as Sid noted, that the game is a little bit of a mixture between old and new. Uh, it's it's mostly remixes of zones and a couple new zones. It's about, um, as they said, 60-40, um, which is close. It's closer to like 75-25. 75 75% 75 classic zones, 25% new zones. Uh, the nice thing about it is, is that they're not, again, they're not just the, a remake of the zone where it's like, hey, it's just the old zone, the old sprites. It, it's mostly the old sprites, but then added on to it. They added more effects, more parallax scrolling, more background effects, more things that Genesis was certainly not capable of. And you could, you'd have to kind of really go into the Saturn to get those kind of 2D uh, background and scaling and rotation effects. So that's really nice. As far as the level design goes, they take chunks of, of levels, like things you might remember, like going through a tunnel and then flying up into the air and collecting a bunch of coins, like from Sonic One or they might take the thing where you're you're going down these chutes in Hydro City and that they're they're kind of like pieces and chunks from the old games level but then much of the levels are completely new so you're getting a new experience and what's even kind of great about it is that even if you're not familiar with all of the old zones from all the old Sonic games including Sonic CD uh, then they're gonna be like new zones for you so for me I played Sonic CD once when it came out on the Sonic Gems collection and it's probably one of the most disappointing games in my life because I was built up that it was this lost treasure of a Sonic game and really the level design wasn't really that good honestly I felt in Sonic CD. It was a lot of blind jumps and a lot of just sort of just visual meh. Uh, Sonic Mania doesn't have that problem with the Sonic CD stages at all. Uh, they're actually very cohesive, they're very fun to play, they're, they're very well done. Um, one thing that's different about the level design in Sonic Mania 
is that they actually really go for the roller coaster moments. In the old Sonic games, you'd maybe get some roller coaster segments where it's like a series of, of loops or corkscrews or, or areas where you fly through tubes. It would only last a very short time, and then usually by second or third zones, like there were hardly any more roller coaster moments. And this game, they they have lots of roller coaster moments. But because the stages are not small, they're definitely Sonic 3, Sonic 3, and Knuckles size zones. They, they have the ability to have plenty of roller coaster moments, but still plenty of exploration areas as well. Again, there's about three or so layers, or not layers, but I should say levels, which you can go through in each, each act. You could go the high road, the middle road, the low road. They're each going to give you very different things. It's really interesting to me because I've actually watched some other uh, reviews and videos of people playing it, and that they've done things on zones, which I've completed multiple times and I've never fucking seen. So that's really kind of cool, the fact that it's there. I think one thing I want to really want to point out, and it's not a lot of it, and it's, it's actually kind of minor, there are some light puzzle-solving elements to the game, which I really appreciated because they're not, they're not hard, and they're not prominent, but they are there at a couple moments, and I really, really dig them. And again, it's not something that's something maybe necessarily needed, but it's fun to have just a little bit, just a little bit, not a lot, of light puzzle solving elements in it, um, which is really, really cool. As far as how the zones all connect, well, a good, a good chunk of them have like the really cool little scene transitions that were started in Sonic 3, and some of them just don't, which is probably like the biggest disappointment of the game is that they don't always have the really cool uh, zone transitions, which I really do love, and everyone really loves, and it's really kind of kind of heartbreaking that not all the zones have a transition from one to the other. Huge bummer there, but I mean, if that's your biggest bummer, <laughs> I mean, that is like almost no higher praise for a game. Uh, it's, as far as the special stages go, um, they're based on Sonic CD for the Chaos Emeralds, and they ditched the, I guess you could say pinball or others type stages. Like, it, with Sonic 3, they, they kind of combined Sonic 1 and 2. When Sonic 1, if you had 50 rings, at the end of a stage, a giant ring would appear behind the goalpost, and you'd go to a special stage. In Sonic 2, if you have a certain number of rings and you hit a, a checkpoint marker, a bunch of little rings come out, and you can jump in and get a try to get a, a, a Chaos Emerald. Sonic 3 introduced the idea of giant rings are just hidden somewhere in the game world before you finish it, and they still have the thing from Sonic 2 where it's if you have enough rings at a goalpost, a bonus stage will appear. And a bonus, the bonus stages were kind of neat in Sonic 3, but they were also very quick and dirty and, and really didn't really add much. They were just there to give you a couple extra rings or maybe a shield and that was it. There was like no point to bonus stages. And I hardly ever go into bonus stages during Sonic 3 play, replays. But bonus stages have been turned into the Blue Sphere, Red Sphere, Blue Sphere stages from Sonic 3, which was once the Chaos Emeralds. This is actually a personal favorite of mine. Uh, I knew they would go for something kind of new or different uh, with this, the Chaos Emeralds special stages. Which is, you know, nice. Again, it's sort of based on Sega CD, but using 3D polygons as well as little Mode 7 effects. And it works. It's fun. Um, a lot of people tend to like that one more. I'm a Blue Sphere whore, so I really, really enjoy Blue Sphere. And the fact that there's like 32 Blue Sphere stages, and you get medals now, and the medals are different depending on if you got all the rings or not. And those do all kinds of crazy cool unlocks. This is a game designed by smart people. <laughs> so, uh, I love everything about that. Uh, I, the zones they picked are almost all good. There's really, there's really not any bad zones in the game. Like, maybe the last couple of zones are, are kind of a little on the lower end of enjoyment for me, only because I'm an atmosphere guy, and I, I really dig atmosphere. And, and the nice thing about Sonic Mania is that they pick really atmospheric zones. For the most part, uh, you've got a really good healthy selection of classic and new. And the new zones they made... They really fit. They really fit the Sonic motif like, like a lot. So I'm happy to see that. And the, the unlocks are kind of weird. They locked the two-player mode behind beating the game as far as I can tell, which is weird. Uh, maybe it was a metal unlock. I don't know, actually know for sure. Um, but the nice thing about the some of the unlocks, including the two-player and the, the time trial or the, uh, the speed running kind of mode, is that they're narrated uh, by Mitsuyoshi the Daytona announcer and singer himself, which is really fucking cool. Uh, the amount of Easter eggs hidden in this game are absurd. I was happy at how many I was able to just pick out and, and 
notice is being a Genesis fan a long time. There's really not a lot, if, if any, references or Easter eggs to anything past the Genesis era. This is almost like any, anything past Knuckles is like kind of like ignored, which again brings the game up highly in my view because the reality of the situation is there's never been a great Sonic game post-1994. Uh, there have been okay Sonic games post-1994. There's been Guilty Pleasure Sonic games post-1994, but there's never been a great Sonic game post-1994. That includes Sonic Colors and Generations. Those are fine games, but they're not great. They're good. Uh, Sonic Mania is great. It's better than most of the original Sonic games of which it's based off of. I'm having a hard time debating whether I like it more than... Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I feel design-wise, it's a better game than Sonic 3 and Knuckles, but at the same time, there's a little bit of things I kind of really dig in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, just as far as stages, and, and uh, I kind of like the ability of, of uh, Chaos Emeralds and Super Emeralds, and uh, the, the story flowed a little better in that, and, and oh my god, why am I talking about story? I gotta say, one of the strengths of Sonic Mania is that it doesn't, it has no more story than it's needed. Uh, just like Sonic 3 Knuckles, it, it has no voice acting, it's little tiny cutscenes between stages, and that's it. Sonic doesn't talk, he should never talk, he never should have talked. Anytime they added stories or added characters with voices, it just degraded the series more and more and more and more. And this game, again, ignores everything post Knuckles and just says, no, we're just going to take what worked and what should be and make more of that and that is Sonic Mania so I mean if you're a big fan of Sonic Adventure games or not and this is, that pisses you off hearing that I'm sorry but you know tr truth hurts sometimes <laughs> but no Sonic Mania is exactly what I need to be it's the lost Sega Saturn Sonic game we never got not Sonic Extreme a good Sonic game the continuation of the 2D motif and the reality is I feel Sonic Team has been vastly outclassed with this title they have shown they don't obviously have any idea what it takes to make a good Sonic game. All they know how to do is make a really fucking annoying CG cartoon. And really, I, I, I really wish Sonic Team would just go back to making Knights games. Cut out the story in, in voice acting from Knights as well, because that didn't fucking need it. Uh, just make 3D Knights games and let Christian Whitehead, Pagoda West, and Head Cannon, and T. Lopez, and Hyper Potions, and Tyson... Just let them make Sonic games. That's all they should do. This, this is a better revival of a classic style game series than the new Super Mario Bros. series. The new Super Mario Bros. series is, is good, but it's also a completely soulless, bland retread. And then it even retreads itself. Uh, we'll have to see what Sonic Mania does. If it sells well and we get a Sonic Mania 2, uh, we just hope that it doesn't use the exact same zones as Sonic Mania 1 does. Because that's what new Super Mario Bros. has been doing, and it's fucking boring. So this is probably a strong case as to why you don't shut down fan games, especially if they're really well done. You hire them, you have them make an official game because that's what they would want to do more than anything in the world. And the results from Sonic Mania is a game that completely topples and stands tallest among its own franchise. It's something I know that these major corporations will have a hard time grasping. Sega somehow, somehow a miracle happened and they got through to them. But you know, for the assholes at Nintendo who who don't see the value in fan games or protecting their copyright and all this other bullshit, uh, take a chance. Look at what's being created here and make it your own. Because in the end, everyone wins that way. The the, the fans who become these great game designers. They end up making a product that's that's amazing, that's, that's one of the best in the franchise. You get money, your, your franchise gets new life, your consumers are happy, everyone fucking wins. The only time nobody wins is when you fucking cancel projects and then do nothing with the franchise. So, uh, if I was going to rate Sonic Mania, I, I, I guess I'd give it a 9.5. The only, like I said, the only thing is I'm a little bummed about the transitions, and I I would have liked to have seen a few more original stages. Like, that's about the only thing. Um, another kind of neat little thing is that you get a, kind of a different experience playing as Knuckles, just like Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and I, I think I should point that out, because some people might say, oh, well, it's just the same stages with the, all three characters. No, no, it's not, actually. Just like with Knuckles, you get different, different acts, different paths that are exclusive to Knuckles, and yeah. Again, a smartly designed game, and I 
encourage anyone to buy it. It's 20 bucks, which is a fucking steal and totally worth the money on, on whatever you decide to get it on. And I hope you all do because it is the best Sonic game in well over 20 years and possibly ever. So I totally recommend going to buy it and that's all I gotta say. Let me know what you guys think and I'll see you on the channel. Later, dudes.